every single electron has an intrinsic property known as the electron spin. And it's the spin of that electron that creates something called the electron's magnetic dipole moment. Now before we get into that, let's recall generally speaking how a magnetic dipole moment is formed. So recall that a current loop forms a magnetic dipole moment that is given by this equation. So basically we have a conducting loop of wire that carries a positive electric current, let's suppose in a counterclockwise direction. And as it travels, it will basically form a magnetic dipole moment that is given by mu that points upward perpendicular with respect to the area that our loop of wire encloses. Now if the area is given by A, then the magnitude of the magnetic dipole moment mu is given by taking the product of I the current and A the area. So this gives us the magnitude of the magnetic dipole moment formed by the current loop. Now, what about the electron magnetic dipole moment? Well, if we treat our electron as if it was a particle, then we see that the electron actually creates its own electric current that loops or orbits the nucleus of the atom. So let's suppose the nucleus of the atom is at the center of this loop. So basically we have the electron which now moves not in the counterclockwise but in the clockwise direction and as it moves because it has a negative electric charge and it moves with a very high velocity it basically creates a continuous negative electric current and that's exactly why we have to reverse directions. So if we have this negative electric current that is created by the charge on that moving electron, if we have this negative electric current it will create a magnetic dipole moment that also points upward perpendicular with respect to the area. Now in our discussion on classical mechanics and the electrons orbit around the nucleus we were able to show that if we take this equation we can actually obtain equation 1 where equation 1 gives us the magnetic dipole moment of the electron as it orbits the nucleus of the atom. So mu is equal to E multiplied by V multiplied by R divided by 2 where R is the radius of the orbit, V is the velocity of that electron in orbit and E is the charge on that electron given by negative 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 coulombs. Now, any time we have a particle with the mass m that is undergoing rotational or angular motion, that object with mass m and velocity v and radius r creates an angular momentum that is given by this equation. So we take the product of the mass m, the velocity v, and the radius of orbit r, and we get the angular momentum that is created by that electron's spin. Now, if we rearrange this equation and solve for the velocity, we see that the velocity of the electron as it spins around is equal to L divided by m times r. Now, let's call this equation 2. If we take equation 2 and plug it into equation 1 by basically replacing the velocity with L divided by m times r, we get this result and notice the r's appear on top and bottom. We can cancel the r's and we get that the magnetic dipole moment that is created by the electron is equal to E divided by 2 times M multiplied by L, the angular momentum. So let's call this equation 3. Now, this gives us the magnitude of the magnetic dipole moment. What about the direction? Well, the direction of the magnetic dipole moment of the electron lies in the same axis, lies along the same axis as the direction of the angular momentum. But because the electron has a negative charge and the charge on this current is opposite to this charge, which is positive, that means 
they point along the same axis but in the opposite direction. So if L points up, the mu, the magnetic dipole moment points downward. So once again, the angular momentum L of the electron points along the same axis as the magnetic dipole moment mu of the electron but in the opposite direction. So that means we have to put a negative in front of this term. And we see that the magnetic dipole moment of the electron is equal to negative e divided by 2m multiplied by L, where m is the mass of that electron. So basically, this gives us the electron's magnetic dipole moment created by that spin in terms of the angular momentum of that electron. Now, we can also express the electron's magnetic dipole moment in terms of the orbital quantum number. Now, in our discussion on quantum numbers and the quantum mechanical theory of the atom, we were able to show, or actually we simply said, that the square of the angular momentum L is equal to h bar squared multiplied by L multiplied by L plus 1, where h bar is a constant and L is the orbital quantum number. So basically, if we take the square root of both sides, we isolate L and we see that L is equal to h bar multiplied by the square root of L multiplied by L plus 1, where L once again is the orbital quantum number. Now, if we take this L in this equation and replace L with this, we get the following equation. So this equation gives us the electron's magnetic dipole moment in terms of the orbital quantum number. So mu is equal to negative e, the charge on that electron, multiplied by h bar divided by 2m, where m is the mass, multiplied by the square root of l, multiplied by l plus 1. So this equation gives us the magnetic dipole moment of the electron moving about the nucleus of that atom. Now, what happens if we take our electron that is spinning, so the electron has a spin that creates a magnetic dipole moment, and now we take the electron and we place it inside an external magnetic field. So let's suppose the direction of the electron's magnetic dipole moment points along the following axis, and let's suppose we place it inside a magnetic field B that points upward as shown. As soon as we turn this field on, basically this magnetic field B will exert a torque on this electron's magnetic dipole moment mu. And it will orient it, the torque will basically move it and align our magnetic dipole moment along the same axis as the direction of the magnetic field line. So when an electron with a magnetic magnetic dipole moment mu is placed into an external magnetic field B, the magnetic field creates a torque that acts on the magnetic dipole moment of the electron to orient it along the magnetic field B. Now, we can choose the direction of the magnetic field to be any direction. Let's suppose that the magnetic field points along the z-axis. So let's suppose this is our z-axis. Now, if we turn on that magnetic field that points along the z-axis, what will happen to the angular momentum L of that electron? Well, basically, the angular momentum of that electron will orient itself along with the magnetic field. So that means if the magnetic field points along the z-axis, this angular momentum will also point along the z-axis. So that means the L angular momentum will point along the z-axis and that's exactly what this subscript means. So L subscript z means the angular momentum of that electron points along the z-axis. Now recall in our discussion on quantum numbers we said Said that L subscript Z is equal to the product of our ML, which is the magnetic quantum number, multiplied by h bar. 
Now, if we take this equation and replace the L with this quantity, we get the following result. And notice we place a Z beneath the magnetic dipole moment because if we place the magnetic dipole moment inside our electric field, not only will the angular momentum orient itself, but the magnetic dipole moment will also orient itself along the same Z axis. And that's exactly exactly where this Z subscript comes from. So we have our magnetic dipole moment of that electron in terms of not the orbital quantum number, but now the magnetic quantum number. So negative E h bar divided by 2m multiplied by the magnetic quantum number ml is equal to the magnetic dipole moment. So this expresses the magnetic dipole moment in terms of L, the angular momentum. This expresses the magnetic dipole moment mu in terms of the orbital quantum number. And this expresses the magnetic dipole moment in terms of the magnetic quantum number ML. Now we define this term E multiplied by H bar divided by 2 multiplied by M as the Bohr magneton. So we define the term as shown as the Bohr magneton and denote it represented using mu with the B subscript where B stands for the Bohr magneton. So if we take this and replace it with mu B, we see that the magnetic dipole moment is equal to negative multiplied by mu B multiplied by ML where ML is the magnetic quantum number. So so this equation gives us the magnetic dipole moment of the electron cloud that points along the z-axis. And notice it depends on the magnetic quantum number.